thank you. This is Mark Harding and I'm Jane Kitson and Mark's kindly invited me in here to talk about my book. You can let it go now. <laughs> <laughs> So do you want to give us a little elevator pitch for your book? An elevator yeah. pitch? Yeah, let our, let our viewers know what it is, the way they should buy it. Um, yeah, of course, of yeah. course, of course, I, I love the elevator pitch. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, tell my elevator pitch. Well, this is a book that is a manual on what to do when you become a parent of your elderly parents, when you suddenly find yourself parenting your parents. And this is a how-to guide. You don't have to read it all at once, you just read the one chapter in advance. So if you want to know all about the legals, this is not an elevator pitch, is it? This is it's like a fine, lecture. It's fine. <laughs> is it? Oh yeah. It's a long elevator ride, it's very tall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Good. In the in this book I've just tried to cover everything that you need to know to help the journey with your parents because it can be very fraught and you always feel like you if you make a mistake there's a lot at stake because if you make the wrong decision about their health or moving their, their moving home or something, it's not just, oh well, that didn't work, it's suddenly they're not in their family home, suddenly they've got the wrong care, or suddenly you're on a two year waiting list for um, a home care package and they may be you know, quite Ill. And, the, and these things, you know, to be ahead of the game and to know everything you need to know about being useful and making the end of their life as as good as possible. That's that's why I wrote it. So I've been living this book. Mm. That's why it took four years. <laughs> and this is half the way of my first draft. <laughs> I know, I thought you'd want to know that. And so, well, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, it's a great book. Uh, and if any of that sounds of interest to you, you can buy it right now on booktopia.com.au. Now, Jean has very kindly agreed to do one of our author challenges, and so we have 10 trivia questions from the world of books to ask you. Um, multiple choice this time, um, and yeah, let's I know, I'm nervous been. now. Yeah. Multiple choice, so that's good. Okay. Okay. Question one. What year was the first Harry Potter book published? A, 2001, B, 1998, C, 1997, or D, 2003? Well, it would be the 90s, definitely. So I would say, and I, I know because my eldest daughter was born in 1991, and as soon as I started reading Harry Potter, she never got to sleep before about midnight because I'd been <laughs> reading it out and I'd go, one more chapter, come on, just before you go to sleep, one more chapter, and so I kept keeping her awake. So it's, it's either 97 or 98, and I'd say 97. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, question two. Which Stephen King novel mainly takes place in the Overlook Hotel? A. The Outsider, B. It, C. Carrie, or D. The Shining? The Shining. Ding! Yay! Well done. You're Thank you. absolutely killing it. I love multiple choice, so far so good. <laughs> Alright, which books were the joint winners of the Man Booker Prize last year? A. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood and Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. B. Frank Histein by Jeanette Winterson and Lanny by Max Porter. C. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood and Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Elman. Or D. My Sister, The Serial Killer by Oyun Can Braithwaite and Lost Children Archive by, by Valeria Lucelli. I don't know those last two, but they sound good, don't they? My Sister, The Serial Killer. My Sister, The Serial Killer is great. Is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 They're really, I think, I think uh, Margaret Atwood was one of the winners, so it's between the, uh, those two I would say. So those two were The Testaments and Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, or The Testaments and Duck's New Report by Lucy Elman. Um, the first one. Ding! Correct! Yeah, oh, great! Yeah. Duck's New Report is actually an interesting book, just on a tangent. Uh, it's a thousand pages and only eight sentences. Lots of commas. Get out. Yeah, no, genuinely. Eight sentences. Eight sentences. A thousand pages. Yes. It's not one of those books that you open up like the, the thoughts of Malcolm Fraser and it's empty. No. <laughs> it's not one of those. No, it's very, very dense. Oh, I mean, right. I, I haven't actually read it myself. I just know that that's kind of the book with it. And then I picked it up and I was like, no, too many comments. I can't do it. But, but it's, it's good and people should read it and buy it. Which I feel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that whole Malcolm Fraser thing is really showing my age. <laughs> Proud boomer. Bad <laughs> Okay, boomer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next question. 
Yeah. Uh, Hilary Mantel's third and final book in her series based on the life of Thomas Cromwell is going to be released in March. What is the title? A. The Mirror and the Bodies. B. The Mirror and the Light. C. Wolf Hole 3, this time it's personal. Or D. Wolf Creek. Well, it wouldn't be Wolf Creek. <laughs> so tell me about Hilary Mantel. So she's written um, a series based on the life of Thomas Cromwell. The first one, Wolf Hall. Wolf Hall, yeah, yeah I, read, I, re- I, re- I saw the series. That was brilliant. Yeah, so that won the Booker Prize. And yeah. then the second one, Bring Up the Bodies, came out about five years ago now, I think. That also won the Booker Prize. So oh, wow. a lot of um, anticipation for this book. So another historical novel. Yeah. Uh, and tell me the... You have to repeat it again this month. Oh, okay. I, except for Wolf Creek, we won't yeah. do that anyway. <laughs> So, The Mirror and the Bodies, The Mirror and the Light, or Wolf Hall 3, this time it's personal. Oh, uh, The Mirror and the Bodies, or The Mirror and the Light. I, if I was writing, I have no idea, you know this, I'm just trying to get, you know, like... I like how you're working it out. But I good. would like, if I had a thing, I would call it um, The Mirror and the Light, and she's already done bodies. And you would be absolutely correct. Ah! Yeah. Well done. Oh, I'm liking this. Wow. We should, yeah, I usually hate this, but because I'm so, going yeah. the right, I'm so happy You're with so myself. That means yeah. the next one I'll get right. <laughs> I'll All just right. really make a fool of myself now. All Our Shimmering Skies is an upcoming novel by which Australian author whose debut novel was a huge bestseller recently? A. Trent Dalton, B. Jane Harper, C. Heather Morris, or D. Craig Silvey? Trent Dalton. Ding! I think you might be about to set some kind of record with this. Hey! Uh oh! Oh, I'm lost! Alright, well, the next one's really easy. Um, what sort of animals are the focus of Watership Down? A turtles, B rabbits, C possums, or D squirrels? It should have been possums, shouldn't it? That would have been great. But then it wouldn't have been Watership Down, it would have been a horror movie, because yeah. possums are scary, entirely yeah. scary. Yeah. And in fact, if anyone's writing a children's book, I think they should write a horror book based on mad psychotic possums yeah but it's rabbits yeah actually another thing possums yeah. man i know we had these visitors come from england these friends and this we always have possums on our veranda and we're going oh yeah the possums you know and they're going oh my gosh i can't believe the wildlife in australia possums and here yeah, you can give us some apple if you like and then i thought the possum had gone and then suddenly I'm standing, talking or saying you want a drink or something. And then suddenly the po- a possum bit me on the toe. Oh, no. Bit me, drew blood. Oh my God. I know. So I ran up and went, oh. And then the visitors, they just freaked out and yeah. they on their chairs and from Q Q to, oh my God, this is terrifying. Then I went and got our first aid kit, which is like this plastic <laughs> This is an Australian first aid kit. It is a huge plastic <laughs> box with everything in it for every sort of injury that yeah. the wildlife can do on you. Yeah. Yeah. Weird creatures. Yeah, that's what I mean. That'd be a good story, right? You yeah. Know, like, just not yeah. a bedtime story. For... Hey, look, as, as you did with this book, you saw a gap in the market and you wrote a book to fill it. You know, maybe the next step is a children's book about possums. That will exactly, children. traumatized yeah. children. Yeah. You know, I you know I say I wrote that for myself to help me with my parents, but actually I wrote it for my children, so that no one. <laughs> I hope you're watching <laughs> and paying attention to your mom. Get off your phone. <laughs> All right, next question: uh, Who created the fictional detective Philip Marlowe? Was it A. Raymond Chandler, B. Dashiell Hammett, C. Agatha Christie, or D. Arthur Conan Doyle? Well, it wasn't Conan Doyle and it wasn't Agatha Christie, so I would say... So it's Philip Marlowe and it's either Dashiell Hammett or who is the first one? Raymond Chandler. Raymond Chandler. Dashiell Hammett, Philip Marlowe. Oh, if I get this wrong, I'm going to be so mad with myself. I love a good detective novel. I can give you a clue if that would help. So uh, one of the more famous books that he was in was The Big Sleep. Oh, well then that's... Raymond Chandler. Ding. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, this one, this one's, a, this one's a gimme. It's so easy. You'll get it. This is the opening line to which novel? It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Is yeah. it Jane Eyre, B. Emma, C. Pride and Prejudice, or D. Northanger Abbey? Jane Eyre. Oh, Pride and Prejudice. I'll give it to you. Ding. Pride yes. and Prejudice. No, Pride you look at me. So I know it's Pride and Prejudice. I haven't times have I said it. It's a truth, and it's a start of. I used it as a start of one of my speeches about 
girls once, so I should have known that. But I think I knew I was wrong as soon as it was out of my mouth. I don't know, I feel like I feel like I should be disqualified. No, no, I'm gonna give you that one. Because like you, you knew. It, yeah, it I knew. Funny. Yeah. Alright, two more questions to go. Alright, yeah. second last question. Which best selling Australian crime novel is set to be turned into a film this year with Eric Banner in the lead role? A the dry, B the broken shore, C the ruin, or D the nowhere child? Oh, the dry, I would say. Ding! Very good. That's Jane Harper, isn't it? That's Jane Harper. Yeah. Yeah. And I think she has a new book out at the end of the year. Booktopia.com.au. Oh, yeah. Dan McMillan. <laughs> yes, them too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, last question. Uh, Leanne Moriarty wrote a book about how many perfect strangers? A3, B8, C9, or D2? And is that the book with the rocks on the cover? That is the book with the rocks the, on the so cover. So it's, it's got more than two, and it's got more than three. Mm. So it's either eight or nine. Mm -hmm. Eight perfect strangers or nine. I don't know. I would say nine perfect strangers. Ding, well done. You are the first person who's gotten every question right in our, our author quiz. You're oh leading the Oh my god. Well done. Oh Yay! my god. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. That is, yeah, amazing. I feel amazing. like you should have balloons and streamers. <laughs> like, I feel like I, feel like, like, or something. I feel like the production's I've now let you down. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrified. I'm not really any good at this. It's the way you ask them. No, oh my baby, god. Oh, you got 100%. Oh, say it so, so. Oh, sorry, I'm being really modest. <laughs> So. <laughs> Jim Kinson, thank you so much for oh, joining us today Matt. and congratulations on the book and all thank the very you. best. I'm sure it's going to be a smashing success. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just so happy I finished it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. That was great. Oh, thank you. No, that was good. Oh, I can't believe I said Jane Austen, though. I knew it was quite a prejudice. I'm watching the heaving bosoms and, you know, <laughs> from the television show. And... That's how I do it, but I couldn't have done it without multiple choice, I must admit. You're still filming this, aren't you? I'm filming it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could, can I just say I couldn't have done it if you hadn't shown me the questions before? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, so thanks, Matt. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> and cut. <laughs>